What is going on, everybody? Welcome back. You're still here, Adobe Live. It's late in the day. Maybe it's early in the morning or even very late for you. But you're here back with us, day number two, with our girl, Julie Sandusky. How are you doing, Julie? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm very excited. I think we were talking a little bit before. I've not had any water today. My blood is filled with a lot of coffee, but I'm really, I'm probably the most excited on the stream. But let us know in the chat if you are more excited than I. Guys, we have Wade in the chat, Emma, Julia, Voodoo Val, we have Paco, and many more. Guys, real quick, we have some house cleaning items because we want to get the floor or give the floor away to Julie today. Yesterday, we did some amazing things, and I want us to spend a little bit more time today on Julie's side of things. We talked a lot of design of business or business of design, but now we want to focus on the actual design itself. So let's get into that. Let's get into the schedule. All right, so today we are here with Julie Sandusky. It is 12 p.m. PT. Next, we have at 2 p.m. PT, we have Howard Pinsky doing our XD Daily Creative Challenge. And then to close out the day, we have at 2.30 p.m. PT, we have Design in the Dark with our man, Hawk. All right, guys. So Julie, what do we have in store for us today? Yeah. So for anyone who's new joining for the first time today, hello. Um, yesterday we started building an app for pop-up restaurants. So basically enabling home cooks or professional chefs to successfully start like a small little food business, um, either out of their kitchen or their home kitchen. So, um, we covered a bunch of research stuff yesterday, how I structure out projects, um, mm -hmm. went through some pain points and opportunities and things like that. And we got into the design side of things. So this is like a bit of an overview of what we did yesterday. So we went through like an onboarding flow for a new chef who wanted to start a business. And then we started out building um, basically the main pages of the navigation. So a calendar for today's orders that are coming in. We have active orders. So when you're actually going to start cooking, um, seeing what orders are available there. Then we're right. gonna finish out building the rest of those pages. So a menu page, earnings page, and then a profile page. So that's kind Ooh. of like the overview of where we're at. We're, we got a lot going on. <laughs> we are gonna be overachievers today. I'm super excited to see this. We we have a couple more people in the chat coming in. We have Julia, Wemo, Emma. Guys, we are in, we have a lot in store. Julie, I, what are we gonna, actually before we even do that, guys, I missed out on you. Those of you on YouTube who want to join the family, in our conversation, me, Julie, and ask questions, please come over to Behance, Voodoo Val, or one of our amazing mods are giving you guys the link on YouTube. Come on over. But Julie, where are we starting with today first? I know we we were getting into some wireframes. Where, where are we yeah. going to land now? Yeah, so we're going to jump into this active orders page because that's what we were finishing up yesterday. So we're going to work Excellent. on finishing up the structure of that and then we'll jump into the menu and then if we have time we'll get into earnings but i want to really get to prototyping today um Let's so going it. through the whole flow and then being able to have like a fully prototyped app by the end of the day that's the that goal sounds like a plan that sounds pretty good yeah. so i'm gonna jump in to this page so active orders the goal of this experience is basically more on the restaurant management side of things. So that's probably mm -hmm. something that we don't really have insight to, right? Like we have, <laughs> maybe you have worked in a restaurant. I don't know. Um, I have, but we don't want to get into that story. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, but basically as a chef or a cook, you have to manage like tons and tons of orders, right? They come in mm -hmm. one after another. And so you yeah. want it to be super, super simple so that people can, or a chef can quickly jump and see, okay, what's the order that I need to prioritize first and so on. Yeah. Um, so this first one, I'm just thinking of doing like a sidebar kind of structure where you can see the order number. So from one all the way down to 20, 30, however many orders you have. <laughs> we got 30 dishes to make, ladies and gentlemen. All right, how, how, how is the, I'm, I'm interested to see how you do this. And guys in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys have any questions while Julie is designing, you have questions on how she made something, um, or even have suggestions on how she might attack something, please drop them in the chat. We're, we're here to collaborate, have fun, and also learn some things. 
Yeah, so I started out, I used repeat grid and then I ungrouped it because I like to mess around with things after I use repeat grid. Um, but basically the way I'm looking at this is like, I'm gonna have it kind of go underneath mm. um, so that a user can tap on number two, number three, and then it'll basically show up what that order is on the other side. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, what do we wanna, what's, what do we want in the order? Brandon, what do you think? Should this be like breakfast sandwiches maybe? Something I feel like this like is that? what was in our conversation before we jumped on. Something about a no bagel bagel. What was it? No <laughs> bagel no bagel. Idea. I don't know. You guys were talking about something avocado from Whole Foods. Toast. I mean, avocado toast with no bagel. I have no idea what it was. What was it, Julie? <laughs> I I think we were talking about avocado toast and a seasoning I, that's good for that. That sounds millennial enough. I think that might yeah. have been it. Okay. Yeah, so we could do that as one menu option. Something that I, in Seattle, don't feel like I have access to is a good breakfast sandwich. Like I, I'm from New York where you have such a good breakfast sandwich at delis and stuff like that, but here I just yeah. haven't found one. So I kind of want to make that. Um, so let's, and then we could pull some fun Adobe stock images too. Beautiful. Oh, you know they have some good avocado toast shots. Like who does, oh, yeah. right now, who doesn't? I know, it's kind of a requirement, isn't it? Yeah, we have some people in the chat talking about <laughs> voodoo vows like burrito, <laughs> breakfast burrito. Breakfast burrito. Hey, that's a good one. We can put that on there. Yes. This will be a group order. So I'm gonna wanna have the menu item. So we'll have a breakfast sandwich. Maybe we'll have like a note. So if they specify that they, I don't know, want allergic. extra bacon. <laughs> yeah, or they're allergic to something. That's super important. So that needs to be, have a visual cue. Let's do extra crispy bacon, something like that. I like that. I've I've seen an order, and I'm I'm not saying I'm not guilty about this myself. Is ordering food that the main course of that dish, I was I said I didn't want, but then they were like, "Why are you ordering?" And I was like, "I really like the the pasta that comes with it." <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's like probably the number one thing that upsets uh, probably the cook. Maybe it's not, but I would assume. Yeah. But hey, if the pasta is good, you should just be able oh, to order yeah. that. Um, okay, let's think of a side. How about like some tater tots? Have you ever had those for breakfast? I They're just remember I, I've i had, when I think tater tots, I think of elementary school and how I used to kind of like, oh, and this is so bad. I don't even, how many people are watching? Should I victimize myself? All right, 115, that's enough. I think that I won't incriminate myself, but I would try to find tater tots children did not eat. Um, and granted, I was a child myself at the time, like around six, seven. I love the tater tots that the cafeteria served so much. I would yeah. almost borderline dumpster dive for tots uneaten. So. Oh my God, <laughs> this is perfect. This is perfect then yes. for you. Your ideal yeah, breakfast. But this is this is more sanitary. Okay, that's good. Um, I'm also gonna add like a little, so one, one goal of this app is also to connect the chefs to the customers essentially. So I wanna have mm. the option for the chef to like text the customer or at least see who the customer is um, because maybe they're a repeat customer. They come every time. So it'd be kind of cool for the chef to be able to know that. So I like that. let's take your name since this is your breakfast, Brandon. I spell that right? Yes. Amazing. Perfect. I, I think, did we talk about how I was tall, uh, called grocery bag when I was younger? No, we and did the not. the sadness that it, that it, in, it brought in me. Maybe it was because I was, I was live streaming this morning and, and that's what it, um, that's what it did. Anyway, we're not going to go into story time. We can, if we, if we would like, but, um, I want to go back to your repeat grid comment. Yeah. I am an avid user of the repeat grid. Those of you guys in the chat, I would also like to hear about your guys' uses of the repeat grid. However, sometimes I like to just use the repeat grid to multiply things and then just ungroup it. I feel like sometimes it it warrants being used in that way. How do you use the repeat grid? In what situations? Yeah, I mean, I use it a lot. Like you just said, I use it and then I'll often ungroup it. Um, because otherwise you have to make a component and then mess around that way, um, yeah. making certain changes. So yeah, like, especially if I'm doing like a numbered list, I'll always just make a repeat grid, which is just command R and then these little green handlebars appear and then you can see 
all new repeated elements of that. Um, let's see what else do I use it for? Yeah, I mean, honestly, the name says it perfectly. Anything that's repeated. <laughs> Repeat Anything grid. you don't want to copy and paste 25 times. Repeat exactly. Grid. Yeah. <laughs> that's, Control that's, or Command R. That's what I do. What do you use it for primarily? That's pretty much it. Like, uh, I was about to say back in the day as if it was like 30 days ago. It's back in the day. Um, time just moves so quickly. But honestly, it's if I'm dealing with cards or if I'm dealing with a component, I really just don't want to hold alt and drag. It's primarily what I've used it for, for, but I've seen the Howard of Pinsky and many other people here on uh, Adobe Live use it in very interesting ways. I think it's, you know, it's it's a tool that is available for us, and uh, I've seen it used in interesting ways, just like um, <sighs> 3D Transform. I've seen some very interesting, um, which we're also somehow going to use today, which I'm excited about. But um, yeah. you know, I've seen some very interesting ways people use 3D Transform. Yeah, I'm. We'll probably get back into that one. But um, for the the front experience, so we have some images that are like I pushed behind each other using 3D Transform. You maybe can't tell super easily off just look of it, but kind of want to play around with this like parallax effect when you first open up the app. I think that's going to so be we'll, like the we'll coolest portion. I'm looking very yeah. forward to that. Me too. What else? What What's another favorite feature? Feature. Let us know in the chat or Brandon. What's yours in XD? In XD, right now. Oh man. Okay. So, uh, I honestly, there's this. I'm not sure if it's a new thing, but it's just because there's this new trend of glass morphism. Um, the oh yeah, you were background mentioning background that color. yesterday. Yeah, I was mentioning yesterday. Um, it's been a thing at top of mind, but the ability to take a shape and actually blur the background behind uh, said object with a um, a click of a you know a check of a box is really interesting. Um, and not only that, but you know everything just seems a lot more easy within Adobe XD. Not like pulling assets into or pre-existing components assets whatever from one file into a new file i just feel like the not having to wait how thing how adobe xd integrates with other programs like photoshop i can just pull in my assets if i'm super lazy in adobe xd right click it edit in photoshop and i can edit my photo right in there save it and it appears how i've edited it in xd that's honestly probably the best feature i yeah. like because I can, I can edit my assets. My heavy duty um, must edit assets in uh, straight in Adobe XD, kind of. Yeah, yeah. I love just being able to like <laughs> jump back and forth between Illustrator for those illustrations we looked at yesterday, and just like change things. It's it's just so fast, you know. It's such a good yeah. part when you're designing. Okay. We have some questions. Let me see. People are ready for like imagery and colors. We have Aaron, will there be pictures on the page? Brandon, I just stole a photo of you. <laughs> I screenshotted you, <laughs> threw you in that there. That was quick. Those, those shortcuts, ladies and gentlemen, she was like. Phoop. One like shortcut it. that I learned this year, which was so life changing was that if you're on using a Mac and you do, you know, command shift four. So you start a screenshot. And then you hold mm. down control option command. So those three buttons right next to each other. It doesn't yep. create like a physical screenshot on your desktop. It just copies it to your clipboard, which Ooh. I use so much like throughout whenever I'm in XD. I just like screenshot, copy clipboard and paste it in. Super easy. Man, I'm screenshot master. I, the, I'm, I'm so actually very unorganized. I don't like making, fo I make folders for my files that are basically become files on my desktop. Um, I don't know, how exactly do you, I'm sure it's an easy and simple answer in terms of organization, but we would love to know in the chat because I, I'm not sure if this is a creative challenge that I just somehow uniquely or don't uniquely have, but do you have, when it comes to organizing your files, creative files for, uh, let's say, you know, what we're building right now is actually for a client um, well, yeah. actually, you know, XD has everything insulated, but let's say you have assets that are outside of um, the platform and you have to organize those things. How exactly do you organize them? Do you have yeah. a... 
I feel like I use, I definitely use a folder structure. I, a lot of the people I work with use like Google storage. So I typically will just make like a, I'll upload things into like a, a file folder there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, I feel like that's another tool I just use in general is Airtable, which I love. I don't know if you've ever used that before, but I've actually not. Um, I've heard a lot about it, but what it, what exactly is Airtable? Um, think of it like Excel or Google Sheets, except it just is way crazier. <laughs> like you can just do a lot more in terms of like linking elements, and it's a lot more intuitive, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so I use it a lot for like even like project management, so tracking my freelance gigs and my finances and my travel, you know, things things like that. So I haven't used it for tracking design or like storing design work, but <laughs> one day. That sounds pretty cool. I was very taken by the the name of the actual program. I was like, it sounds like a table that has supposedly some air. I'm not sure how that would benefit me. <laughs> we've um, got Airbnb, so... we've got air table. <laughs> what other things do we I have? Was like, in my, I was like, Airbnb bought a table. That's nice. Um, <laughs> there we go. Is, is it by Airbnb or the or it has nothing to do with? It has nothing to do with Airbnb, okay. from, from my knowledge, at least. Um, yeah, I don't know why it's called Airtable. It's a good question. Um, so I'm on the menu page, which I'm excited about because then we get to show some food images, which is always good at lunchtime. Um, so basically this page, the goal of it is to allow the chefs to create their menu. So for breakfast, for lunch, for dinner. Mm. And then I want to have this like kind of carousel of uh, items that are on the menu. So starting out with that breakfast sandwich and then we'll have like the tater tots and then maybe what was that other thing we talked about? Avocado that toast. One. Avocado toast. We can have that in there um, or a breakfast burrito. I think but, there Val we go. That, See, right? Val was coming it? in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I really um, like how you've um... sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I, I was just going to say, I was going to pull in some stock image, stock images Ish. over here. Let's so, do it. Let's I was going to ask, I've here. noticed the way that you wireframe things this isn't necessarily like, oh, here's a block of text here. Here's a, a, you know, a box for images. Really, everything seems to be boxes. Is that something that you just do in terms of uh, for speed that you find is something that's a little bit faster for you? Because I've yeah, seen that. I've never actually... Yeah, if it's a quick kind of, if I'm, I'm trying to work really, really fast, I yeah. won't bother with text because I typically will just copy text from another artboard and pull it in and then adjust the size there. Um, yep. But if it's like a full, I have some time and it's a full project, I'll do like a formal wireframe where I have like text and then the boxes for imagery and things like that. But for this purpose, I like to just use it for like general layout and structure. I like that. Does anybody else question. in the chat, let us know if you guys like to, when it comes to speed or even if you're working something on your own, is working the way that Julie is working right now, is that something that you guys do too? Or do you do block of, for images and a block of text for text? Which one works or for you? Or do you not wireframe at all? That's another interesting one. Mm. Some people don't. People just know, it's people totally just cool. like they, Yes, they can smell the colors they're going to use that day. I don't know. Some people are just built like that. <laughs> <laughs> built for speed, you know? Yeah. Go straight to it. Look at those tater tots there, Brandon. Oh, is that a pancake or is that a burger? What, what do we have? What do we have in there? I'm going to say for the purposes of this that it's the breakfast sandwich, but it looks like it could be a burger. <laughs> I'm having Lord. some low-key PTSD. It it kind of reminds me of the lunch trays that I used to have in in, uh, in elementary school and the tater tots. Mm, yes. Mm, there we go. Some good memories. Yeah, but that burger, the first one, they have. It looks like they have like, what are they called? Where it's pickled. I don't oh, know. What is that? Yeah. Uh, like pickled onions. Like a pickled ca cabbage. Maybe. Or maybe. pickled onions. Are cabbages pink or are they purple? There's red cabbage. Oh. Well, it's like, it's purple, but when it's pickled, it becomes kind of a bright pink. Interesting. Yeah. And one thing I like to see that you're doing too, and I, some people don't know this. And I remember when I first started Adobe XD, like I didn't know I could just pull in images to the yeah. squares that I've had. And I was like, how do you do this? I was trying to like mask things. Like how long 
or maybe you were just you you know you opened XD and you just knew it took me a while <laughs> when did you start utilizing the boxes in that manner to pull in your assets I feel like I discovered it by just like trying to drag in a photo here and then I saw the blue box you know and mm. then I was like oh cool and then you drop it and it's there they were uh, like obviously yeah and then when you double click into it you can then mess around with how it's masked which is mm. i think really awesome makes it really quick i like that all right so we've got three images in here we have the breakfast sandwich the tater tots and then we have some avocado toast in here which looks pretty delicious so i'm going to close this up Nicely done. How's the chat going? Do we have chat any questions? Good. People, no, a lot, they are very adamant. The chat, and I, I, I adore you guys for this. We're talking about how hungry we are, where we're from. I love the community we have here. Voodoo Val is getting where everybody's from. We got people from France. Um, wow. I was about to say someone is from Cabbage, but that totally is non-related. But we have people from all over the world. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining in. If you have happened to join in and you happen to be on YouTube, come on over to Behance. This is where the family is. At, well, family is in both places. But if you would like to join us in conversation in the chat, come on over, come ask questions. And let me just scope through here to find some things. I know we mentioned a couple things way back. Um, to, relating to how things are organized. We have Tom The Rock in the chat saying, I like to organize things, folders A through Z, including names like typography, 3D gradients, etc. Anything that requires its own folder. I probably would have like 3D gradient one, 3D gradient two, 3D gradient five, and then like somehow throughout the day, a cabbage photo would end up in like the gradients and then the structure <laughs> would just be <laughs> gone for, I can't stay consistent. I mean, it is challenging. What I'm curious um, about is, do you name your layers in XD? Oh, no. Well, okay. That's contextual. When I'm working <laughs> with the team, yes. Because I have been, we've all have been in the boat. And we want to know this in the chat too. Have you ever worked with a designer that threw their design or their file over the fence to you to work on? And you had no idea what to touch in their file. It just looked like a hot mess where it's like layer one, two, three, four, five, 121, and then rectangle 3,560 and a half. Like that, <laughs> that gets, <laughs> I have been um, in the position of receiving that and I will never bring harm to anybody in that way again. Um, <laughs> what, what, what about you? Yeah, I don't name my layers typically if I'm especially working fast, but I try to always name yeah, my right. artboards because when you mm -hmm. zoom out, you can read them. And then I like having some sort of title at the top. Yeah. Another thing that I enjoy doing is I create a um, cover photo for the file so that when you open it, yes. so if I go to open a new file, it looks like that. So it like fits the screen so you can see like, oh, this was for Adobe Live pop-up restaurant app. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that's something you do, but I typically will it try is, to make it And it's something photo. that used to drive me nuts back in, um, I keep saying like back in the day, like I'm old or something. Maybe I am, <laughs> we're, we're borderline 30. Um, not to say 30 is old, but I, you know what? You know, I feel like every don't day, worry. It's just, guys, I'm getting crow's feet. <laughs> the lotion's not working. Um, anyway, back to the, back to design. Um, I love that you put the nice little edit thing there. Are we gonna uh, see what happens yeah. when you when we click that? I think I'm gonna change this to a. I'm debating between these two buttons right now. So either mm. manage the item, which then it pulls up fully like edible. This yeah. Huh. Editable <laughs> item, or I can have one here. What do you think? Or what do people in the chat think? Do we want like a manage item button or do we want like a little icon that allows you to edit the item? What do you and think? what is the, ed do we know what the edit item thing is gonna look like? Did we did we make that yesterday? Or are we gonna on we a fly? We haven't made that yet. That's gonna be, it's gonna be maybe next. But the okay. goal of this is so that the chef can basically manage you know, the description of that item, maybe the price of that item, um, maybe the photo that is included for that. 
Um, this is just kind of an overview of the menu. So that's Got the it. goal. Part of me wants to say we should go with this button because it's more clear, but. I, I think, I believe so. Okay. I think that, that it's clear. Maybe we can, yeah, let's, let's work with that. We have some people in the chat also, they like the button. So we've made a good choice. The chat is okay. finalizing our decision. We have uh, golden rose. I'm good with the manage item button. I think, I think that's, that's a good choice. Let's rock with We're about to use your feet grid. So I wanna show basically at a, at a high level how many menu items are within the breakfast yeah. menu, for example. So I'm gonna use repeat grid. Let me make this black so we can see. So I'm gonna command R and then drag this. And let's say we have, right now we have three items. So I'm gonna leave it as three. And then this is when I'd probably just ungroup it and then I'd adjust the color. So right now we're on the first one and then we're gonna gray these ones out a little bit. And I'm gonna use like a different, I'm gonna use kind of like a dark gray, which I think I have in here. I really like how organized, oh, that's one thing that we can talk about. The assets panel, I see that, well, first off, you're very organized with everything in your design file. And I've also see that on the left-hand side, you have all your colors in your assets panel. Um, I would love to know not only from you, but in the chat, how often do you guys utilize the assets panel? That's one thing that makes definitely my designing a lot faster because I don't have to find things in my design file. But what do you, how exactly do you use your assets? Well, obviously it looks like you've used it quite often because it is, it is fully, <laughs> is fully decked out <laughs> with everything. Yeah, I use it a lot. So this is specifically document assets. And I love the new update where it's now a library. So you can see other libraries that you have as well if you're working on multiple different projects. But with document assets, I feel like once I get to a good spot in terms of my like visual design for an app, I'll add yeah. everything to um, my document assets. So then I can like make global changes. That's something that I find really helpful is like I can just edit this color Yes. And it'll change it across the file, you know? So that's something, oh no, but I didn't see. And then you <laughs> Z back and you're good. Um, that's something that I find really helpful and almost why I make components pretty early as well, because then you can just make global changes throughout. Yeah, So I, that's, go ahead. go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I was, I wanted to know what you're thinking. What do we have, what are we, what are we about to do to breakfast? Yeah, so I am going to add some sort of visual indicator that we're on breakfast and not lunch and dinner. So I'm debating yes. between using a little line that we can have right here. I like to round the corners a bit. Maybe make it a little thicker. Mm. Throw a color on there. And that assets panel, ladies and gentlemen. So it can look like that. Or I can just leave it as blue but we're more of a sea foam i don't know what color this is part of me thinks i'm colorblind sometimes but i think One it's more I of a sea foam yeah I, I mean i don't know what sea foam is i always get really confused <laughs> with colors like someone's job it, you know like the the pantone color of the year i'm like does mm. somebody name those colors those things like whose job is it whose salary is paid to be like you know what this year's color it's seafoam esque, and I'm like, why couldn't it just be seafoam? Like, what hat? Like, where did coral come from? Right. Um, I think that was like, <laughs> I was like, where? Who? Do you know where uh, those decisions come from, or even why? The, I mean, I guess it's nice to give a name, but I feel like the hex codes are so much more informative than being like, no, that's seafoam. No, that's uh, sapphire, because there has been. I wouldn't say there's been conflicts like that where there's like fights over colors when it comes to design things and i'm like yeah can we just look at the hex codes like what's happening like what are your thoughts <laughs> on <laughs> namings of colors versus the hex code of colors there are so many names for colors <laughs> like it's it's wild if you get one of those books that just has all the colors or all the main colors that people use um mm. but they're kind of fun they add personality to the color so i don't know i kind of would go back and forth i feel like maybe I but i don't know who makes those grocery. decisions that yeah was, that's what's interesting guys if anybody in the chat knows how those decisions are made please 
not only entertain us, but please educate us on how those things are made. I think that's something of interest that, um, you know, I, I crack jokes at it, but I think that's uh, also an interesting topic. So yeah, are we making something... a button here? Yeah, so what I wanna do um, for here, so right now we, we've moved on, we paused on the menu page, we got it to a, a decent spot. So now I wanna go to earnings. And the goal of mm. this page is, um, I keep saying page, I mean screen. Uh, the goal of this screen is to basically show how much you made as a chef during this day, maybe this week, maybe this month. So I want to have like a quick, um, I don't know if you'd call it a toggle, but a toggle back and forth between daily or, um, and then weekly and then monthly. So yeah. I'm just going to add, um, that text as well. Daily, weekly. Ooh. So like your average, you know, so mm -hmm. how much you made on a day-to-day -day basis, day-to-day -day basis versus oh. how much you made. I have just wrote average and then to say weekly and then monthly. This will be interesting. Yeah. So then again, it'll just kind of go back and forth between the two. I'm going to reverse this because I realize it's different my other screens. Hmm. I think we have an answer in the chat. So we have Talon saying naming colors is extremely important way to distinguish between colors that can sometimes be very close in value slash hue. Important for branding as well. See, that is a very intelligent answer. I was like, I have no idea. The hex codes could, you know, they could, they could tell us that. But naming, especially from a branding perspective, that makes sense. I wouldn't yeah. want to be in a branding meeting and saying, yes, our delicious new color of, you know, I don't, I don't know, creamy pumpkin. I, <laughs> obviously that's not a job for me. Um, I, it sounds better from a branding, branding perspective than being, you know, saying hashtag zero five, 29, <laughs> six. Um, yeah. So thank you so much Talon. It is true. I mean, it's hard to sometimes distinguish just for the normal eye between very close colors. So having a distinct name, I'm sure helps. Definitely. I need to definitely learn more about colors. That's something on my list of things to do. <laughs> but the question is like how deeply and um, yeah. like how deeply must or do you need to know colors in order to be effective as a designer? And this is kind of what we were talking about yesterday. How much do you need to learn to be effective at what it is that you were trying to do, you know? Yeah. And it is quite obvious you're very effective at what you're doing. And, um, you know, we're having a conversation about, you know, <laughs> how does Pantone, Pantone has a very specific job. Um, we don't have Pantone's very specific job. So therefore we are able to, you know, fly in the wind kind of of how we're, and it's not necessarily flying in the wind. Um, you know, we, we do what we can with our, our color knowledge. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's true. It's kind of like everyone has their specialty and, we can all it's it's you can't do everything right so you can always hire exactly. someone or pull from someone else's expertise for something like color you know people specialize in that um yes. and it supports other teams. creators yeah exactly so are we gonna with the are we gonna do any creative bars with the 567 how are we going to display this is it just going to be a solid 567 or are we going to what, are we what do you mean by creative bars? Like it kind of moves around or? <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. What are you thinking about um, how are we going to showcase the earnings? Yeah, so I was thinking of just having it static, but you reminded me of a fun animation I've seen where like the numbers kind of almost like, I don't know what the right word is, but they are like oh, rotating when around they in a way. Yes. Okay. You know what I mean? I so yeah, maybe yeah. we can play around with that and when we get to prototyping. Let's do it. I, that's so one I'm, of my favorite, um, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm just I'm just adding in some like details here, um, you know, like what it costs for to run the service and things like that. So that's just what I'm doing right now. So food revenue gotcha. and then um, the other stuff. So yeah, go ahead. Awesome. All right, guys, so do we have a question? Are there any more videos like this within that are live on Behance? The question or the answer to your question is yes. By the way, if you guys are new and watching Julie for the first time yesterday, this is part dose, part two. Um, 
we had part one yesterday i believe any of those links are down in the description you guys can see how we started this but don't leave now don't leave now we're going to answer all your questions live but if you're interested in seeing where we started yesterday you guys can happily and easily watch that from the beginning after the live stream after the live stream stay with us chat chit chat ask questions and hang out we have uh what's going on kyle mac welcome to the chat talon what is going on let's see let me let me deep dive for any more questions i liked how i like their color conversation oh i mean how did i miss steven don't know what makes them who makes them but i like how sites convert hex codes to names hmm. so apparently there's a particular site that gives names to just hex code colors that is very interesting that is interesting but, yeah i didn't know about that apparently voodoo has her own voodoo purple i like that we, i think we're gonna need like we're, we're gonna need to see that in the chat voodoo that is very interesting I, I wonder if she uses like a particular purple in her illustrations yeah if, or what the name is for it Be apparently voodoo purple oh Wow, I love that. I like it too. Aaron is asking, do you stream every day? That's a great question. My friend, we stream every day here on Adobe Live. We have multiple different guests where you can come learn multiple different design related skill sets. So today, Julie, we are doing UI UX related stuff, but uh, Julie, let me ask you this, because I know you have dabbled in quite a few things. Mm -hmm. And I think this is also a good, uh, you know, for other people in the chat who are made be in UI UX, but also might be in graphic design or anywhere else. Did you jump in straight into UI UX or did, was there a moment you were purely in graphic design and then found out about UI UX? What, what exactly, what skill came first? The chicken or the egg? What happened? Oh, good question. Um, I actually have no graphic design like experience in terms of like from school or or anything mm. like that. Um, so I started mostly just with like UX design during like hackathons and things like that. Gotcha. So it's fully self-taught in all aspects of design. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like but it definitely started out with, um, you know, like I had these ideas for different startups or different app ideas. And I was like, how do I make this like come to life in my brain? So that's yeah. how I started out with um, app design basically was through designathons and hackathons and things like that that's awesome yeah, what about what about you what was your background story kind of the same thing i just picked up you know i pretty much we were talking about taste all of yesterday where it was like i want to be able to make this thing that i think is absolutely awesome uh what are the steps required to actually make this thing and i luckily we have the internet in this days and age this yeah. day and age and if i just say hey siri <laughs> and uh you know find out some videos on how someone made, uh, you know, glass morphism or really any trend at the time, I can reverse engineer what it is that I would like to make. And totally. even things like what we're doing here on Adobe Live, getting to watch someone like you live do their thing. We get to learn, just like from your study you brought up yesterday, we get to learn on the sidelines how someone like you can create these things. Yeah, totally. I, I wish I knew about Adobe Live when I was studying, you know, like years ago, but maybe it didn't exist at the time. Um, but yeah, it's such a great way to see how other people work, structure their projects and get to know each other as well. Definitely. So yeah, everyone who's joining, you're learning as you go. Everybody in the chat, I would love to know or even put a one in the chat if you guys have in some way, form or fashion excelled because of Adobe Live. I should see 143 ones in the chat. Go. <laughs> <laughs> no. And by the way, since we are, let's see, we're, we're pretty in deep. We're 39 minutes in. If you guys are just joining us and you happen to be on YouTube, come on over to Behance, guys. Voodoo Val is giving links away so you guys can come and chat with us here and the rest of the Adobe family on Behance. Join the conversation, ask questions, and learn along with us. I see we're going back to our active orders. What's happening? What are, what are we getting into? Yeah, so I'm just kind of looking 
at an overview right now of how things kind of work cohesively together. Um, so like I said before, I'm the way I'm looking at this is like each page or each screen of the navigation. So if we zoom into this navigation bar here, we've got the calendar, we have active orders, we have the menu, and then we have earnings. And then this is supposed to be like a profile um, mm. icon. So I think we have, we've got calendar, active orders, we're here on the menu, and then we have earnings. And then profile is the next one to tackle. So once we finish that, or at least get it to like a decent state, then we'll go back and prototype everything and then keep refining. Let's do it. There. Yeah. All right. I'm looking forward to the, the auto. Are we doing any auto animating with yeah. putting these things together? Ooh, oh, I can't wait. I know. Do... Yeah, that'll be a fun part. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Guys, let's cheer Julian in this last piece. Because we really... Nah. <laughs> Someone was really excited and decided to call. She was like, Julie is, is starting to prototype on this? Someone called. They were extremely excited. Um, extremely. So... I would know was, yeah. No, go for it. Oh, no. Go continue. So what are we going to name this pop-up restaurant? That's what I want to know. We got to come up with a good name for it. So it looks like we're breakfast themed. So if we have any any ideas in the chat for what we should name this breakfast shop, let's see. we can yeah, let's edit let's this. let's keep a placeholder. Let's see what the chat has to say. As we have exactly. this in a placeholder, ladies and gentlemen in the chat, let us know what you think this breakfast shop should be yeah. called. Drop drop some drop some some titles. And one that I don't know what your what are your favorite plugins, Brandon. Honestly, the ones? life saving ones are the Lorem Ipsum uh, plugin, the icons for that. design, and you have it at the top of your plugins right there, Anima. Those are the top three that are um, not only life changing, but game changing. A lot of people who are sleeping on um, Anima when it comes to building prototypes directly from xd and not having to rebuild anything you can do all your animations and everything uh directly in xd and export that with a click of a button um you know to be either a live prototype that you can send to clients or actually have a website of your own it can be done directly with 100 percent clean react or 100 percent clean html css so interesting stuff yeah i have not used anima before i have it downloaded but i i need to i need to do that Man, have so, you played around with it? I have not, no. I've heard a lot about it, but I have not gotten the chance yet, but I really need to. Something that I do love is the padding. I just realized when I copied over this button that I didn't have padding enabled. Um, so when I changed the text inside, it didn't automatically adjust. So I just enabled that padding. And then I'm gonna bring this over here. So I have the same kind of button. You know what, let's make it a component first. That way we can always change it. Sweet. So now when I edit the text and do manage profile, it adjusts for me. Let's see. <laughs> we have people in the chat. I, I always get excited about auto animate. Guys, stay tuned. It's gonna happen today. So stay nice and comfy in your seat. A couple more minutes, couple more minutes, seconds. And yeah, uh, let's see. We have super soon. Huh? Super soon. We'll get to that. One more page. Super soon. We have a couple. Ooh, I like that one. All right. I, honestly, I'm going to start with this one. First off, the breakfast, breakfast shop name is Julie's. I like that. There's actually a Julie's right by here. And it's really good. Then I need a different photo here. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think Julie's is really good. Um, the other ones. I'm not, I don't want, I would not grow, I would not eat at a diner called Gross Diner, Gross Grill, or Gross Cafe. That, we're turning around. I, would, I don't trust that kitchen. <laughs> not in the slightest. Amazing. <laughs> All right. I can change this photo later, but let's pull in one of these as well. Got you. All right, so Voodoo actually posed a, uh, a great question because there are quite a few people to new people in the chat. What is the use case or what is the importance of components? You just used it there, but what can you explain particularly for the yeah. button? 
What is the yeah. benefit of using components? So if you're designing something, you're probably making a million buttons. We'll use buttons as an example here. Um, mm -hmm. So when you are, especially early in your designs, things are changing so rapidly, right? Like maybe you decided that you're gonna go with um, more like square corners rather than rounded corners. So yeah. the beauty of a component is that once you make something a component, which you can do by using command K on a Mac, you can also use your little help button if you want here, you can right click. Um, any subsequent copy of that component um, will receive any changes that you make to the initial component. So for example, I'm right now on the main component, which yeah. you can see this little green diagonal there. So that indicates that it's the main one. If I change the color, so let's change the fill color to this yellow. It automatically changes that on that subsequent component. So it just helps like speed things along. So you don't have to go now manually change all of the other buttons that are um, there. Yeah. It just makes it much easier. We all, that's one thing. Like if it was so bothersome, if you just did like 15 pages and you did a client meeting and they just have one change and it's a color and it's a button. You have to go back to all those or this is again, quote unquote, back in the day <laughs> when you had to go back and I drop every single button. Yeah. To get the color you wanted. But now Adobe Live is, or excuse me, well, Adobe Live is saving lives, but Adobe HD is saving lives and time with such a feature. Exactly. It's a good I'm question. A Thank little... you. Luna makeshift logo here with just a fork and knife make Boom. it super simple all Throw with the colors. use of our friend icon for design exactly we also maybe maybe let's get some repeat and see what happens in here a lot of eating <laughs> <laughs> family dinner um exactly i'm gonna we have in the chat at Wale saying, this lady is good. They're enjoying this. <laughs> we love that. So I'm gonna do a little hack here. So I'm gonna try to get this masked into this shape mm. so that we can make a little logo. Boom. Oh, I missed out how that was done. I saw a screenshot happening and I, would, I got yep. immediately confused. All right, so what I did was, so it's it's a little bit difficult to mask um, something that's like an SVG, right? So um, vector-based into a shape. So if I tried to do that, like paste appearance in here, it just uses the color. So what I did mm. instead was I just layered it on top of the background color that I want in the logo. Mm -hmm. And then I just took a screenshot Right? And then I held down control option command, which is on a Mac to hold that screenshot for me. Deleted this and then using that same shape. Now I can mask that image I made within Got you. this shape and then I can just make it a lot bigger. So now it fits within that circle. I don't yeah, know if there's a different way to, to do it, but SVG. Correct. I wonder if it, <clears throat> if we could do, and we don't have to try right now, but I was thinking the way I thought you were going to do it was making oh, the SVG. Um, well, actually, I'm, I'm not sure if it would work, but the um, I thought you were gonna keep the SVG and just do mask its shape, but I actually never saw the the option that you chose, which you were, um, I don't know, when paste you right clicked. Yeah, I don't, what was that? Paste appearance? I've never used that. Oh, cool. So yeah, you can do that with, um, I think that is a, another feature in another app like Illustrator or Photoshop or something like that. But I can copy anything and then it's the same thing with mass. I can just click paste appearance and it'll then paste it in there. And then I can do the same thing as if I just masked it. Interesting. That can we sense? show that, that that makes sense. Can we show the audience really quick how you would mask something like, let's say you have, let's say you're not dragging something into a shape. Let's say you have mm -hmm. two things and you're trying to, uh, they're already in Adobe XD. How would somebody yep. mask something? Yeah, so let's grab, let's grab a photo from here. 
So let's say we have this, this photo of this guy with a garden and we want to mask it into this shape. So we just make sure I honestly don't use these buttons that much. So what you want to do is you want to have it layered on top of each other. So whatever shape you want to um, basically mask into, what happened here? Um, you're going to want to have that layered on top. So let's say we have this shape. Take hmm. off the border. And then I just grab both. So I hover over both. And then you just mask them together. And then you'll move around the image just to fix it. That's how I do it. Interesting. I actually, I do the- Do you do it a different um, way? I just hit control shift M for the mask, but I've actually never thought to use the intersect. Um, yeah, I've used the intersect. Yeah. Very nice. We learn every day, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I like that. We different ways. <laughs> There's of different ways to do it. it. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, but mostly I use paste appearance. That's like the main, the main thing I do, is I just copy nice. something in my clipboard and then I use paste appearance to paste it in. I like it. All right, let's get to prototyping now. So we have kind of bare bones of where we're at for all of the different pages in the navigation. Um, nice. So I'm gonna start first with where we began. So that first app download screen. And what I have here, the way it's kind of laid out, I'm gonna actually delete these two so we can go through it together. Um, but the way I have this laid out is it's a series of images that um, some have 3D transform turned on, so they'll be kind of mm -hmm. behind certain images, and then some are just kind of front facing. Um, and what I want to happen is I basically want these to be like moving kind of like a carousel down when you open mm -hmm. up the screen. So I also have um, a an overlay on here that's a little bit transparent just so you can see the title pop out. So I'm going to start with, we're going to use auto animate here. So I'm going to copy this artboard and then, oh, looks like I messed up the overlay. Let's just bring it back. I think this is like, this is when we did this yesterday's lady, ladies and gentlemen, we were talking about some interesting things we could do with the masks and all the other stuff in here. I'm not sure how much time we're going to have for that. We do have quite yeah. a significant time, but We'll see. Since this is probably the most, I, I don't know about you guys, but this is when the most exciting part is for me because everything that's been laid out, we can now move, we can do the funky stuff. We can really get down in the nitty gritty with stuff like this. So if you guys at all have any ideas or things you might even wanna see thrown into how things get auto animated in this project, leave them in, in the chat. I almost said down in the comments, <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> it's it's, Definitely over there. Yes, I'm just grabbing each of these images and I'm moving them around. So there's a principle in animation that it's like the stuff that's cl closer to you will move faster. So I'm trying mm. to keep that in, that's correct, right? I'm pretty sure. I, to um, be honest with you, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with that um, and try to mimic that a little bit. So I'm just gonna move every image. Little but I, what I do want to ask, though, because this is also a thing. We talked about this briefly while you're doing this. Um, how does auto animate work in Adobe XD? Yeah, the way I like to describe it is um, it's basically when you have a mirror copy of an artboard. Think of it like XD is clicked record and is watching what happens. Mm -hmm. So then when you press play, it does that animation for you. Um, so you start by having your design and then you copy that artboard, which is what I just did before. And then as I move things around, XD is taking note of that basically. Um, and then it beautifully animates it for you. So that's how I like to describe it. So it's kind of like a before sense. and after. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah, like a before and after. And I use it quite a lot. Man, yeah, like it wasn't, in t and I think th the reason why this is such an amazing platform is because it wasn't until XD that it was really, you had motion graphic designers or even motion designers where 
they were the ones that you sent your design file to, or even maybe it was you if you had the skill set and you were the master at After Effects. And you were the one that had to like take all the assets and again, rebuild it so that you could showcase how the website, mobile app, et cetera, was going to actually work. But XD, mm -hmm. you, can, you, can, you can be like, okay, I want that square to start here. I want this square to end up there. And you have your two artboards, you press play, and it's just like ni nice, nice and smooth. So uh, yeah. it, this is an extremely not user friendly. Well, it is, but that's not the term I was looking for. Um, beginner friendly platform. And I'm yeah. curious for those of you guys in the chat, who is a UI UX designer who hasn't necessarily dabbled in animation just yet? Have you tried auto animate? Let us know in the chat. All right, so I'm just linking these up now. So I'm in prototype mode and I just added a wire to this next screen and then I added a wire to this next screen and we're gonna see what happens. I usually just mess around with this. So I'll make some changes and then wire them up, preview them and then see kind of how it goes. So bear with me if it's a little funky <laughs> to begin with. <laughs> I think that's always so, the thing. It's just like, it's gonna be funky. It's going to be funky. We're going to change this to a time trigger as well so that it just kind of goes without us doing anything. Mm. All right, let's see what happens. OK, so the second first and second look pretty good. So I'm going to try this one again. I went with a different method for this third one, so I'm going to change it. So let's see what we got. I'm just moving these photos lightly. I'm trying to read the chat here real quick, see if we have any questions I'm trying to comb through. Yeah. And Wale, let's see, it seems, we'll have to ask if they'll share. Let's see, what did I miss? What did Adwale ask? Hello, if I have to follow up with the design in my free time, how do I get the resources used in the video? Interesting. Is do you is this what we're making here? Is this something that you would like to open up to those watching? Is that something you they can follow up with you to do? Like I'm to get the sure file how, or <laughs> to get the file? Yeah, there's some people we have Edwale who is asking, um, and now Voodoo is asking. Hey, Brandon and Julie, is there any chance these source files can be shared with the community? That's a good question. Um, possibly. I don't know what platform to share them on, um, <laughs> but yeah, why not? Maybe we can do something with, uh, you know, with this, maybe we can, I don't know what it is, but we can figure it out. The answer is yes, we just don't know how yet. <laughs> yes, exactly, we'll get there. <laughs> All right, so yeah. the next screen, so we're at, an, we're at an okay spot. I'm gonna continue refining probably later, but for the sake of time, this is where we're at. So we have some, you know, photos moving around in the background. And now I want it to then go to the sign up page. Um, so that's this screen that we designed yesterday. And so I also want this to animate from the um, that home screen first. So the way I'm mm. going to do that is I'm basically going to um, pull in what I designed into my last screen. So I have this sign up um, section, right? So yep. I'm going to just copy that. And then I'm going to paste it on this last artboard and then bring the transparency down to zero so you don't see it. Then I'm gonna copy this artboard, so option. Now I'm going to um, basically move the photos up and to get it to look like this screen above. So I'm gonna play around with this. I'm gonna move the transparency down. This is when things get really tricky because now you're doing crossovers for the auto animate. A lot of people see, um, or when I've shown the cross, you know, going with what we said auto animate is, it's a before and after. So when you start crossing screens like we're doing now, we have right. to say, okay, well, how are we going to go from the loading page or really, you know, deciding if we're a cook or a, uh, I forget what the other use case is. <laughs> and we a need diner. to get to the sign-up yeah. screen. Yeah, the diner. Um, how, are, what is that transition gonna look like? So for those of you guys who are curious or never seen 
um, how to transition and have animation between pages. That's that's what we're doing re really right now. So I'm curious yeah. to see what we're gonna do. Yeah, so I, I basically you wanna make sure that um, everything exists on the previous artboard. So any new text that you have within the next screen should exist on the previous artboard so that it's, it's there and it doesn't just like suddenly appear. Um, yeah. It can get tricky as you get deeper into like an animation and playing around with it. But yes. it's a lot of fun. You so gotta like gonna... move layers and stuff and you gotta get under mm -hmm. things, depending on like how complex your, um, yeah. yeah. And you can't change layer names. You gotta be careful mm -hmm. about that. But it's really, really fun. I love playing around with animations like that. We have in the chat, Voodoo is saying, maybe how about a Dropbox link or create a library for us for the, uh, referring back to this project file. Yeah, that's a good idea. We can make a Dropbox link. Dropbox link. Maybe we'll put it in the, this is on YouTube, right? Put it in the YouTube yes. comments. Yeah. Exactly. So easy stuff, guys. We just have to figure out which platform is the best. So at Wale, to answer your question, yes, you will get that hands-on practice you so much desire and everybody else. And I think there's many other people in the chat who are thinking exactly what you're thinking. So they will be very thankful that you asked that question. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, hands-on hands -on practice is awesome. And if, um, you know, it's awesome that Julie or we had the even not even just Julie that we had the resource to be able to not only showcase how to make these things, but to be able to share exactly what we made live. Yeah, I totally agree. All right, so we're almost there. Looks a little different than what we had before, but close enough. Mm. All right, let's see what we've got so far. So now I'm gonna wire this screen up to the sign up page and it's gonna have auto animate as well. And let's see what happens. Actually, I want it to trigger on when someone clicks four cooks. So that's what we're gonna wire. Gotcha. All right. Very nice. We're getting there. Move around and can you, a little more. With auto animate, there's so many options, so many choices when it comes to snap ease in and out, the timing. How exactly do you go about your decisions for how long the animation should be? Uh, what type of animation you would choose? I know I'm just like, you know what? All I trust is snap. It sounds like Snapple. It must be trustworthy, but that <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a credible source when it comes to how I choose the animation. What about you? Yeah, I I honestly just play around. Like I will kind of go through each, I feel like ease in and out is typically what I gravitate towards. Um, but mm -hmm. sometimes you don't even need any sort of easing. Um, I also play around, around a lot with duration. So basically the duration of the animation. So yeah. for this one, you probably want it to be a little bit faster than one second. So I'm gonna try doing 0.5 and see what that looks like. A little little too fast it feels like so maybe let's jump back to one it's always like a playing game and it, mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's so interesting seeing like going from that that was getting there getting there yeah that's pretty good that's, yeah, that's so pretty we're good. at let's see how we are here so we have this and then sign up and something it. else you can do that I, if we have time, we can play with is having the text kind of animate in. Mm -hmm. um, so starting with sign up kind of comes in and then the actual entry is here, like full name and phone number. So we'll see if we have time for that. I think we pretty, we ha I think we can get through everything. We, we have about like 24 minutes and Perfect. we have, to be honest, I think what we've made in the last, um, and we've only really done, let's see, I'm trying to like, I know our segments together is like four hours and my brain is like that meme where I'm trying to like do the <laughs> math. And I'm like, Brandon, it's only been like four hours. Like what math are you trying to do? Um, 
everything guys that we've done here again if you are just coming in and you haven't seen the first segment of what julie has put together for this amazing application there is a part one i just want to give you guys a heads up on that um but stay here we're here we're live so if you have any questions related to xd challenges that you've had with any of the features we're here to answer those things while we're working with you together um, so definitely stay while we are live here, but you can always go back, rewatch what you've missed at the end of this segment. And you can also watch from the beginning of segment one that was live yesterday. The two will be together here on Behance. Um, all right. So we're now editing text. How, how are we doing this? How are we doing this, Julie? Break so I just got us from the sign up page over to the, um, basically onboarding flow. So that was just a simple transition. Um, so this one I used tap transition and then um, I had it push oh. left. So now when you click, it'll push left. We have this really, really simple wow. onboarding flow. So for this one, I also did a similar thing that we did in the first screen, which is that I had everything exist on this first page. So you can see that when I am gonna move this over. You can see all of the different um, text options that are going to be in our onboarding flow exist on this first page. You just can't see them yet, right? Like if you if you pull them up, you can see them. So mm -hmm. that way, that when I I think I already copied this one, so let's see. Maybe. Yep. So now when I click on, I have it wired up. So now when I tap this, it'll animate up like that. So that's another it. use use case of auto animate. So now I'm going to do the same thing except with the third step. So I'm going to copy this artboard over below it. I really liked how you did the uh, the transition in the push left or right, whichever you did. I actually probably would have sat there and tried to auto animate auto animate it without just using the simple transition. Simple transition. So I'm glad totally. I'm glad uh, guys, I'm here in the chat with you guys. I'm learning with Julie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you forget about the simple transitions, right? You know, like yes. you, you get sucked in by auto animate, which is such a great feature. Um, but sometimes the simple transitions are, are perfect for what we need. Exactly. So I'm just changing um, the transparency of the previous steps so that it kind of like fades out nicely. I'm going to pull it a little bit above the artboard. And then I'm gonna pull in this last step from here. So as you can see, it's all the way down there. And there's a reason for that, which is I want it to animate in. So I'm gonna have this go back up here to like the middle of the artboard. And, we're and I think you might have done this with just naturally, but this took me also a long time to remember to do. A lot of the stuff that you have off, and there might be some people in the chat who've struggled with this because it, when you have things off of the artboard, if they're not in a group, they just go off your artboard. So right. when, like how exactly are you keeping, can you explain to us how you're keeping everything from so far off the artboard, but it's still on your artboard? Yeah, so the things to keep in mind is you don't, um, you wanna make sure that everything is grouped together. So you can see that this whole box is a grouping because um, mm. that'll keep everything on the artboard. And then, yeah, I mean, that's that's the main thing to keep in mind. So when in doubt, when you have things that are gonna go off the artboard, just group them together so that they stay in the artboard yeah. together. So I'm gonna move. That's one thing I was like, why am I trying? I'm trying to auto animate because I, we talked about this yesterday. The further you have things, you can actually manipulate some timing into your animations, even though that Adobe XD doesn't have a uh, timeline. Most people who want a timeline don't realize if they pull things further um, or even closer in how they're, you know, auto animating things to manipulate how quickly or how slowly things animate in. Um, they don't know this other trick because they're like, well, I can't drag it off the artboard the way that I want to, but if you do exactly what you're doing here, which is you group the entire cluster of things that you're going to be auto animating together and you have some things on the artboard, some things off, they stay. Totally. 
So I'm just wiring up this last one. So we're going to do again a tap transition and then auto animate. Let's just make sure that this one matches. He's out. All right, let's see how it goes. So we have that one come up and then I can click for those, let's say. Mm -hmm. And then that one pops up. Oh, we're missing the, forgot to grab the little check boxes. Let's grab this. Oh, they were great. Just like the back one, they were like, don't, don't exactly. say anything. She'll find us. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it a secret. All right. Yeah. There we go. So now we should be good. Let's try that again. So it animates in. Boom. Okay. Now we're on the next screen. So let's add a tr trigger from here to this screen. So same thing, tap. This time let's just do a push left to keep it consistent with the other sign up screen. So I'm going to mm. do push left. The smart get, way. You know, the simple transition. We've got ease in and out in one second. So I'm just going to copy that same one. And guys, by the way, do not forget today we have a very special artist spotlight. I don't want to give up too much away, but let me tell you, she is an amazing UI UX designer, as well as she doesn't mention this, but she has some very, very intense branding work. So those of you guys in the chat, it seems like we have some very serious branders, brand designers, rather, graphic designers in the chat. And even if you're a UI UX designer, just in general creative, you guys are going to be very much interested in our spotlight today. So if you are digging what we're doing now and you're of interest to who we have spotlighting today, stick around. All right, so we're on this last screen of the onboarding flow. So maybe we should run through the full thing so far just to see how let's it works it. together. So let's play it. So we can definitely refine that animation in the beginning. You know, we could have the photos flow. The best way to do it probably is is by manually editing the position to keep it consistent. But just for the mm. sake of time, we're gonna we're gonna go with that. And now when we click four cooks, animates up. And then we start our onboarding flow. Guys, let us know in the chat, what do you guys think? What would you love to see add? I remember, I know right now, it seems like we're gonna do like some minuscule, cause we went through the entire thing. What do you, what do you think so far? Where are we at, Julia? Now that we've we've gone through what we've put together so far, what, what yeah. where are we gonna change? So I think there's definitely some refinements that we can do. Um, what I wanna kind of have, I have a lot of fun doing is playing around with these um, illustrations. So we talked about this yesterday, but mm -hmm. the fact that this is all vector means that we can play around with her like chopping this cell. I think it's celery. I wanna say it's celery. Um, so we can try using auto animate that way and play around with her chopping vegetables just to add a little, a little more flair to the end of this onboarding flow. So should we do that? Let's do it. All right. And guys in the chat, if you have any other inklings, we're going to start on this amazing animation. If you guys have any ideas, I have some, I want to, I want to, you know, kind of chime in there, but we're going to start with this. If you have any other ideas on what you think would be really cool to animate or would like to see, put them down in the chat and we'll get it. We'll see what we can do. Yeah, I'm curious. So, so look, you can see that I'm moving just this knife around, right? So I'm gonna yeah. change the position. So this is where it was at initially, and then we can move it down a little bit for her hand also needs to move. Do you ever play around with stuff like this, Brandon? Not with the, not with illustrations. Um, I, okay. I actually, there was one time when me and Howard were doing uh, a live stream and things got really weird. We were doing a milk, delivery service uh app it, it, it was weird yeah. to begin with but then we started pulling in and aliens i think someone in the chat was like yo listen i know you guys are delivering milk but what if that we had like cows on the map as to where like our uh our dispensaries or whatever our stations were and they were like listen i know we're making this app but what if an alien spaceship and an alien came down and abducted one of your cows on the map. And we were like, you know what? We're going against idea. the grain. We're, we're going to have a, a, 
a UFO coming into our application to steal one of our um, cows. And then we're going to have, for some, whatever reason, we're going to have Pikachu um, come out and save the cow. It got, it got really weird really quick, but these are the cool things that we can do in Adobe Lab. We're learning together, and I think collectively that <laughs> we have some people in the chat who watched that, and they were like, I remember. Um, it was it was a milky app. Um, it, things got really serious. So guys, I know we're in like serious mode. We're watching and doing our things. But as we're doing this, if you have some any ideas that you would like to see or even want to shout out an idea that you think, I have no idea how this would work in Adobe XD, but I would like to see how we do it. We might do a little sidebar if we have time. We have about 13 minutes and 48 seconds not to um, yeah. light a fire. <laughs> Julie's like, wow. Um, so soon. Yeah, we have time, I believe. So I'm just playing around with this right now. So ideally, what I do when I think of like animations, especially if they're people, is I try to mimic it with my own hand to see how the hand flows. Mm. Um, so I'm just honestly playing around with the different points. So having your hand move a little bit, having the knife move a little bit, the celery kind of move a bit. Um, and then I just wired it up with auto animate and I'm going to adjust the duration down a little more. So that's pretty fast. Okay, we have some people shopping. in the chat who are excited to see how you loop this. Um, there's some people who are very upset that they missed Pikachu saving cows. Um, <laughs> I, I missed that too. We need to go. I think we need to, uh, dig that back up. It's, I think it's definitely my first live stream and they were like, how did this happen? <laughs> How did we get here? Um, well, yeah, we can, and that's and that's what we do here on Adobe Live. Like, yes, we get in all our seriousness and we we bring together, you know, how to use Adobe XD. Um, and you guys are learning with Julie how to do looping animations. And it's always, wow, we're, we're getting serious with the, I thought you were just gonna do the knife, but we have the other hand, you know, pressing well, the celery. You know, it looks weird if she's just, it's just the knife moving. You gotta move her head a little bit, maybe her arm. This is true. So we're gonna see, this is when it gets really funky because there's a lot of moving parts. <laughs> wow. But we can do it. We have, we have five minutes. <laughs> <What? laughs> Don't scare me there. <laughs> we, we, we have a good enough time, guys. Um, everybody is reminiscing about the, the Pikachu and guys, it's okay. Listen, what we're doing here is a lot, it's a lot better. <laughs> we, 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 this is practical. Pikachu can come out and save cows any day, but this is a special moment. This is a special moment of when we're cutting celery. Exactly. And this is actually really interesting. I wasn't entirely sure how you were going to do this. Yeah, it takes stuff like this takes a lot of time because you have to really play around with the points in the illustration to get them to look really realistic. Um, mm. So we'll probably we probably won't be able to get it to where it would be ideal today. But I just wanted to show a little bit about how I get started with playing around with an animation yeah. like this. So you think about what moves, right? Because you want it to mm -hmm. look naturally. I've tried making someone walk before. It's super difficult to make it look really natural because yes. you have the head moving, you have her arms, you have the legs. You also have like the scenery. Um, so you just have to keep kind of all of it in mind. So you're doing a good job. See, I would be like, you guys, you have to do, you have to keep all these things in mind. And then my <laughs> stick figure would literally be like, <laughs> <laughs> with stiff knees and everything. So it, it's, I think it's almost a little present for those watching, getting to see, because, you know, we talked about how you can pull SVG illustrations into Adobe XD. And I was like, oh, okay, that was cool. All right, cool. And then you were like, but no, but wait. And it was like a little infomercial. You explained how you could change the colors, how you can actually get nitty gritty into um, manipulating the illustration to actually move. So I was very intrigued by that. I'm glad we're getting to do it um, here. It's, and guys, we've only been doing this for four hours and half of the time we've been talking, Julia, I'm sure you can concur that it is very difficult and challenging to talk while designing. We only yeah. have two halves of a brain. Yeah, it's, we it's yeah. definitely hard. <laughs> Um, yeah, not, I feel like you, you could have an, a whole Adobe Live just on like animating a figure like this. 
Exactly. So this That's... is just the intro. Wow, that actually looks pretty good. You now it's just a couple of minutes. Yeah, we're we're getting there. So I'm now going to move this arm a little bit. Yeah, we have Golden Rose in the chat saying this should be part of the highlights reel. Um, <laughs> So nice work. They're, they're, they're really happy. Golden Rose again says it doesn't have to be ideal, but I'm happy just to see the magic when it happens. We're, we're yeah. happening the magic as we speak. It's happening. All right. So I'm going to do my last touches. I'm just going to move these little patterns she has on her shirt to match her arm moving. And then we're going to see where we are at. I'll move her head maybe a little bit more down subtleness all right so we've got some light some light movement so definitely something wow. we can keep refining um you know her arm looks a little funky here on the left with her sleeve moving but it does add some fun motion into our designs um and this is the last screen yeah. of the onboarding flow so can now we we're gonna really quickly go get into how we looped that yeah so this is a simple looping. Um, so basically what I started out doing is I copied this artboard over. So it's the same layer names and all things like that. And that's the basis of auto animate. And I added a time um, transition here. So prototype mode, added a wire to this screen, used auto animate, and then had no easing, but then the duration of 0.6. And then I just looped it back. So I added another wire Very from nice. this screen back to the first screen so that they're kind of going back and forth. So since it's a time trigger, you don't need to tap anything. The animation just keeps going until you maybe click out or something else happens. So the way to stop it um, is you want to have a, so I have this button here, right? Mm. I need to then wire up both of those buttons because you'll never really know on what screen you're going to be clicking that button. Could be this one, yeah. could be this one. So I'm going to add a wire down to this home or calendar screen. We're going to just do a transition here. We'll do just dissolve. And same thing, I'm going to add another wire from that screen over here. So now they're both linked up to the same page. So whatever screen I land on during the animation, it'll still yeah. both link out. Very nice. I, that's also another thing I didn't learn for a while. I was like, how can I, in the cycle of things, in the looping animation that I'm trying to do, when can I, I'm like, I have to wait till I'm on the correct screen. And I was just like, you're like, no, just link both to the one page. So yeah. pro tip, pro tip guys. Pro tip. You also can always make invisible boxes if you need, like if you want just to simulate, let's say there wasn't a button on the screen, right? But it naturally needs to, to transition. Um, you can just add an invisible box. So take the transparency down to zero. And just remember when you're viewing the prototype that that's where you should click to click out, to go to the next screen. So it's a good hack to simulate, even if you don't have a button. All right, we have about six minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Again, I'm gonna, if you've just popped in so far, if this, if you made it this far, I'm gonna say thank you. Julie has been going hard. This is, it's almost like a sporting event. This is four hours of <laughs> hardcore brain power. She set up everything beautifully in segment one, brought us through what exactly she was gonna do in her pop-up restaurant mobile app. If you guys missed segment one, no worries. We have it here on Behance, but don't leave just now. I'm pretty sure part one is in the description down below. And you can also, if you are liking what Julie is teaching us here today, you can also follow Julie on Behance as well in the description. But guys, don't leave, don't leave. We have time, we have time. I just wanna let you guys know where everything is. We have about five minutes. I feel like every time I open my mouth, a minute has gone by. But as we're, <laughs> as we're, as we're getting happens. through this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shh in a second, but we have in five minutes our artist spotlight, but again, spotlight, find Julie's stuff down below. If you haven't already, please hit the like button, whether you're on YouTube and Behance, and if you would like to join the rest of the conversation for today during our live stream, come over to Behance. All right, Julie, back to you. So I am now gonna wire up the navigation. So this is already a component, so I have it kind of already existing out in space here. Um, and mm -hmm. I just want to, I'm gonna actually pull it down so it's easier to 
drag those wires, but I want each icon to then link to its respective screen. So calendar first, and I'm going to do a, let's do a very, very small duration there. Then we have active orders. Then this is our menu. We have our earnings page. And then we have our profile. That is so smart. I have never done that. Really? So now all no. of my child components here are all linked. So I don't have to do anything, which is really nice. <laughs> Keeps it together. Oh, I've not done it the way that you did it. I usually just have the main component in one of my uh, mm. screens, but yeah. where you have it totally separate and you linked it up. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, I mean, another, you know, when you do it like that, you can also just edit the um, main state, which I think is somewhere in here. Oh, I'm not clicking on the component. Um, and then it'll bring you to that main component. Let's say if you had it on the screen, but yeah, I, yeah. I typically have it existing out in space, AKA wow. our canvas. All right, I thought so you said Arkansas. Now... I was like, I thought you <laughs> lived in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> Our canvas. So now we can just transition to all of these screens. Oh, got to include it on that last screen as well. Let's get that last one in place. There we go. Boom. So now we are all linked up. Oh, well, it looks like we got to push that down. down a little bit. Yeah. I'm just going to re... Oh, I think it was this one. Let's see if that did the trick. Nope. It's a little bit. I wonder... I'm going to copy from this one. There we go. That should there be you go. consistent. All right. So we're pretty good. And what do we got? Three minutes left. We got two minutes left. Let's see. Let's let's go through the entire thing yeah. one last time, and let's talk about it. So we have this nice little animation, and then we're gonna go through our onboarding flow. Lots of auto animate in use here. And then we have our nice woman chopping vegetables. <laughs> Get cooking. And then we have our all of our screens for this app. So things that I would probably do next is um, we didn't have a ton of time to go into getting this up to even more of a full fidelity prototype. So adding things like color, um, maybe playing around with the text uh, styling and such. But yeah. so far, we have a fully wired up prototype for a pop-up restaurant app. Beautifully done in such a short time. like. Four, uh, honestly, it's probably about like three and a half hours to so have built. How many screens did we do? Uh, we got one, count. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ish screens. <laughs> nine ish screens in three hours. So we built an entire, we had to concept, we had colors, animations, a lot of things that we had to do, and we did in three and a half hours. I don't know where and what else other program you can do that in. And also do everything from foundation to prototyping to animation um, in just three and a half hours. So we have about 30 seconds before our artist spotlight. Is there anything you want to say real quick before we pop into that, Julie? Yeah, let it. Let me know your feedback in the chat. So if you have anything, what do you think we should tackle next in this app prototype? Should we mess with more visual design? Do we need some more UX enhancements on here? Let us know in the chat what you think. But this was super, Definitely. super fun. I had a great time. Likewise, it was it was awesome to watch. I learned about like 12 things and I was super excited about all of that. So, yeah. all right guys, let me, before we showcase our, got to do some like screen magic here real quick. Let's hop into our art spotlight of the day. All right. All right, on my screen, ladies and gentlemen, we have the amazing Jelena Savanovich. Guys, I looked that up twice, maybe four times. 
and how to pronounce that on Google. Beautiful last name. All right, so <laughs> people keep calling. They're like, I want to be an artist spotlight. I have actually that was my timer for artist spotlight to keep me on uh, on track. <laughs> We're on track, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Jelena, she is an amazing Serbian UI UX designer and architect. Guys, I've checked wow. out a lot of her projects before we got on live here. And I have to say my favorite one, and this is goes into the multi-purposeness of a designer. She's amazing at branding as well. There's this project for draft, draft a fold and she gets into her logo designs, gives us a little bit about the project, really where she started from her sketches. Oh, I love that how logo. She came up with her. Yes. And that's, that's the fun. thing. Like, and this is a lot of the people that I talk to in the industry, they have come from, because UI UX is new, right? Um, graphic design, you know, art has been around for ever. You know, UI UX is just happens to be a new medium and we're now working with how can art and creativity help business? And that's kind of a new thing. It's still like a child, but the way that she is able to not only with graphic design skills bring that into her ui ux skills which you know will her work rather we'll take a look at the, some of that in just a moment but i love how she lays out her primary colors her secondary colors how those colors are used in the actual logo depending if on their a dark background or a white background and she even has some of her work mocked up on what it could actually look like on some of the brand materials yeah, that's awesome. I wonder what she used to get those realistic mock-ups. Unless they're real things, maybe they are. They're probably my, well, actually, I can't probably say that. I mean, it would definitely- but maybe. Maybe, that would take a lot of time, but yeah. you know, some people are very crafty. I'm like, you would have to order the button, then you would have to order the pencil, and then you would have to get that paper and smooth, you know, very quickly move it on over, slightly to the left, and then you have to take a photo. Um, when yeah. you can very, easily um on a whole bunch of you know online storefronts purchase mock-ups for pins for cards um of this kind and uh be able to not just showcase your beautiful flat design work like this but actually get it on to what it might actually be living on when a client purchases it from you so branding work absolutely amazing let's hop into some of her website and design work. I just wanted to showcase because I thought this was beautiful and just how we were talking about earlier, me and Julie don't necessarily have a graphic design background, but it really shows through when you know graphic design and you pull that strength and that skill into your UI UX work. I already like the name of this one, the Sweet Cake app. <laughs> I do too. There, there's a streamer on Behance called um, Fresh Cake and I get very happy and excited when I see him live stream because uh, I want to go buy cake every time he streams. And that's, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, that will all go straight to my thighs. I would like not to happen during the holiday season. All right, look back to the design though. I think it's very powerful in anybody's design showcase to showcase what was made at really the outcome. I feel like a lot of UI UX designers, obviously the process is important, but when you have employers or people who have the potential to hire you coming to look at your work, et cetera, it's nice to see immediately, hey, this is what I can do. And I'm in very impressed immediately. Yeah, it's like the hook of an essay, right? Like you wanna show what you made up front to draw people in and then you can start breaking down your process and all of those different exactly. screens. It's a great job. It. She's giving a lot of attention to just her design work. Love the color palette. Yeah, consistent colors throughout, which is really nice. Yeah, she even has her work not just in, and, and there's also a difference too, like slight subtle things are important. She has a subtle, you know, subtle shadows of the phone mock-up here. She has the shadow behind the actual cropped design piece. It's not just screenshots. Um, and this is the next level of presenting of your work. You can, you know, anybody can send screenshots, but when you take the time to dress up your work, it says a lot. Yeah. And those mock-ups, where do you get your mock-ups primarily, Brandon? 
I personally love uh, UI 8. I drool immensely. They have everything from like 3D assets to, um, you know, they have a lot there. But honestly, like what you were saying, Adobe stock has a lot of, you know, photography, illustration now that we know, and you can utilize that in how you're animating things in, in uh, auto animate, which is yeah. awesome. Um, but let's see what we got here. We have a little mock up. Let's see. Oh, nice. Got that little transition that push left. And a lot of people will probably question why is there a, what's gonna call it? Why is there a, um, what is this called that I'm moving? A mouse. Why is there a mouse in a phone? I get a lot of questions because I've seen this too, but I guarantee you she's using a PC and is recording her screen. So if any of you had that question of like, why is there, why is there a, um, a mouse in there? And to be honest, it's not the end of the world if you showcase something like that. The thing is, is that when somebody is looking at something like this, we're trying to see how this was made, what was the thoughts, what were your thoughts in terms of how you animated this, etc. So double thumbs up. Very nice. Julie, yeah, I'm gonna let you awesome. pick. Let's see. Well, let, let's I haven't scrolled all the way down, but I think she has a lot of architecture. But okay, a lot of the stuff down below is architecture. Within the first two to three rows, which one would you like to pick? All right, so it looks like we got some, we have another screen design, I think. We also have some packaging design, it looks like. There also looks like another screen on the bottom or the second row to the very, very left. What's this that one? one? Let's take yeah. a look, it's a Fragrance Avenue. Oh, this looks like a nice chic piece. Ooh. All right, Fragrance Avenue website is a concept that allows women to choose a bottle in their favorite scents, so they can get the best experience with custom made perfume. Wow. So there's context. <laughs> cool. Give us context in the beginning. Awesome. And then we get to exactly. see the full prototype. Let's see, let's do a quick scroll. Beautiful. Choose your bottle, find your perfect scent. I'm very sure that's not the voiceover that would be <laughs> for this particular <laughs> brand, but um, just deal I with my voice. I can't go very low. Or high. Something I, I see on there, if you scroll up a little bit, so you know, you know, we're at the bottom where you have the little bars that shows what perfume you're on. You can yes. add a really fun animation. Maybe she did that where the small little bar then gets animated out to a big one when you're on that, that item. Um, I'm curious if she ended up using that in her animation or prototype. We'll see. Hopefully, I, I hope she has one at the bottom. And by the way, yeah. guys, let us know in the chat what you guys think about this. Very nice and clean product page, charming fragrance, 125. I think I might pay that one time. Well, I don't know. <laughs> one time and hopefully that lasts like a year. I don't know which, which size that is, but let's hope it's the biggest one. Oh, there's a nice. 251. Let's hope that lasts two years. <laughs> there's also 375 if you see on the right. No. <laughs> hopefully that's the biggest one. Yeah, um, I bet. Oh, but that's the quantity. So that's one and times three. Okay. Oh, we right, do. Check... We've got it. Yes, let's check, check this out. out. Let's let's full screen this. Let's full screen this. She did it. Nice drag animation. That nice, yes. yeah. A nice Ariana slide in left. the chat says, yeah. Got a nice little sl Very nice. Well, prototype there. Lemon scent. Man, you can get all the scents. You be oh, smelling cool. like fruit basket. You know. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. That is that is on me. Let me let me turn that off. Okay. My phone is just so excited about what we have to show here today. Let's see. Let's go back to home. Yeah. I like that little transition that she has. But I think that yeah, might be it's it. That might be it. Beautifully prototyped. Super simple. Like, goes along with my mental model of what I would expect. Um, so this is awesome. Yeah, and just final nice thing. Um, go ahead. No, no. All you. The stage is yours. <laughs> <laughs> the, the stage is ours. I, I don't want to, you know, like we were saying yesterday, it's hard to go back and forth. But I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you close this one out. Yeah. So we looked at three projects, two projects, three projects. Three. So it looks like 
I mean, they all are beautifully prototyped, very simple, intuitive, easy to use. Um, I love how she has different types of things in her Behance portfolio. So, yes. you know, architecture to logo design to UX, um, she's got it all, it seems, which is really awesome to see. So if you're watching this, great job. Keep doing what you're doing. She is. It's she's awesome actually in see. chat. Oh, amazing. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing? You have a very exciting and amazing portfolio. And I hope that from everybody watching, you guys get to see a higher end taste level in skill set where, you know, she has what some may call a T-shaped designer skill set where she's very well skilled in certain aspects and she's brought those skill sets into other avenues in her work, which is absolutely beautiful. And I'm, to be honest, I'm quite jealous. So, claps. <laughs> really well done. All right, we have about 10 minutes here. Guys, I think we have some time to yeah. hop back into our design project. So Julie, what, what do we, with our 10 minutes left, what, what slices of amazing animation are we gonna give the audience today? So right before I asked the chat if we had any suggestions on what we would do further. So if there's any suggestions we got on what we wanna tackle, whether it's refinements in the animation or you know visual refinements, let me know, Brandon, if you see any. Otherwise, we can, I'll give it 10, 10 to 20 seconds if you see anything, um, but we can let's, kind of pull it all together and do some refinements. Yeah, let's get into the refinements that you would like to go first. And do we have some people in the chat? I kind of like set off some PTSD with my alarm. I think that's a lot of people's waking up alarm. Guys, it's okay. <laughs> but um, let's, if you guys would like to see anything Julie to have Julie refine in her auto animation, let us know. But let's let's deep dive into the refinements, Julie. Yeah, so I'm just gonna look an overview here. So probably what I wanna do is add some color. So let's play around with, with some colors that we got. So we have let's this nice it. illustration up here, which has a beautiful warm color palette already. So. Oftentimes, if I find a good illustration, I'll pull from that color palette. Um, so I think some of the ones I had set up here are a little bit similar. I have that in my assets panel as well. So I'm just gonna play around adding some color into this prototype. So let's start with this sea foam. bar here. Yeah, sea foam, gray, <laughs> green, whatever we wanna call it. And then I'm gonna add, let's see what happens. I like to just kind of mess around and see that green what little... works yeah see what works i might honestly go with this green make this a I think little that's bit a nice fit. i love this icon this like celebration icon <laughs> <laughs> that's probably was that in uh what's it called was that in um icons for design no i think i got it from the noun project so that's that's oh, I a resource i use often I'm curious though if we have like a celebrate in here. We might not, yeah. But I'm, um, yeah, confetti is fun to play with. There is a um, plugin. I think it's called confetti. Yeah, I lost to a design one? challenge. Someone used that plugin on me and they had beautiful <laughs> animated sprinkles everywhere and I had lost. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Jelena. Right. Really well done. I wanted to say, I, I see your chats and you're saying, thank you so much, Brandon and Julie, for your kind comments. Well, thank you so much for being able to share your amazing work with our amazing audience. Yeah. Keep up the good work. Color is always very Color's challenging. Really hard. Yeah. yeah, like black and white is fine. But as soon as we get into colors, and especially when I see like more than two colors, this is also why I just wear you know, black and just a decoration of gold. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I have color troubles in real life, but how do you, and we talked a little bit about, about this yesterday, but is it like a trial and error thing for you too when you're using color? Yeah, so if, if there's not already a design system there for you to use, I feel like I just play around with different colors and see what works. Yeah. I think the main thing is keeping it consistent um, so if you start changing colors in one aspect of the design, you kind of have to go back and check out um, where else that color might work. So, for example, I started with the seafoam 
green here and I think I have a similar um, structure here. So I also want to make that seafoam. Yeah, I think that seafoam would actually look really nicely because what we have designed, it's, it looks like nice, fresh eats. And yeah. I think that could be part of the branding where it's like nice and fresh. Yeah, something I think I have in here is this paper like background. And I wanted to play around with that because I've seen using texture a lot lately, um, whether it's on Dribble or Behance. So I wanted to see what yeah. this looks like. So I'm going to pull this in behind. Let's start with the menu. Oh, for like the, the background. For the full background. Let's see what it looks like. And then it's a little stark, so I'm gonna just make it transparent. And see how it just adds nice a little, little bit of fun, subtle texture. And I might take away this background as well. I really and like, like how a menu. you kept it's every, like a paper menu. Yeah. You know what I really liked though? Um, is some of the restaurants I've seen have gone fully digital so you scan a piece yep. of paper and you get your menu on your phone i was like why hasn't this always been a thing? i know right i was like i feel like that's to touch the menu that's one of those things that will probably stay after the pandemic's over is i would hope so qr code menus yeah have you ever touched a sticky menu that makes you want to rethink about what you about to order Brings me back to my hosting days when I used to have to clean all those menus every night. <laughs> and there's like 50 menus. Took a while. Yeah. We so want to have adding a quick... this. Go ahead. I'm just adding this paper texture to other screens because I kind of like it. I think it's nice. I really like the subtleness that you've added. It, we've done a lot here, like nine screens. I know when I've seen other, um, and we finished. We finished on time. We had we're we are in excess time right now. Um, yeah. We have about seven minutes and we're now going back, putting in like the nice refinements. Yeah. Um, it's been, yeah. Has anyone played around if you in the chat, if you played around with texture, like textured backgrounds, let me know and let me know where you've gotten your backgrounds from. I'm curious. Where did you grab your back? Is this also from Adobe Stock? I don't think it's from Adobe Stock. I think I got this one from Unsplash or Creative Market, one of the two. I had mm. it from a while ago, so. I haven't checked Adobe Stock to see if there are good paper textures. I would assume there would be. There definitely has to be. They, they There's gotta I, be. I was making, yeah. I had some, uh, I think there was recently like a huge like Adobe Stock. Um, like free credits or actually I'm not going to talk on it because we were like free credits and then I'm going to get an email afterwards like that is that is not what we're promoting. Um, I do know what so you're talking gonna, about. They have yeah, a was, um, they have a free library of images which actually I pulled yeah. a lot of these images that are in this kind of slide slideshow here are from Adobe mm -hmm. Stock free. So yeah, you can have access to there we go. a bunch of free images which is really helpful. Yeah. My friend Julia Masalskin if you guys watch obviously she was <laughs> she was live streaming before um, our episode. She was the one that told me about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great resource. They have a ton of really good images there. All right. I think I added the paper background to most of these. So yeah, the, the goal with the paper background really was to make it a little more like homey and connected. Mm -hmm. Connect. I don't know. I don't know the right word, but warm. You know, like sometimes like a stark white is a little too much. Um, yeah. So just adding a little bit of warmth, whether that's just a colored background, like a light beige or something, or this time playing around with some texture. So this is what we got. Yeah, sometimes it's better to add something subtle than adding like this whole new thing to just for for sake sake. Yeah. The other thing I had to play with was our type. So right now I don't I don't love this initial type that we're working with on this top screen for. Um, when you first download the app, ideally we'd have a logo in here, something like that. Um, but for now, it's kind of just like a title. So experience home or taste home, something like that. So I have a, a, a few other um, typefaces here that I pulled in from Adobe yeah. Fonts. So I'm going to play around and see what those look like. So let's start with Cap 
Catalina. I love that new spirit one. Guys, what do you think in terms of fonts? We have about five-ish minutes here before we wrap up. It's a new spirit. That looks pretty homey. That does. Let's add some. We have Muhammad in the chat saying, very quickly, in five minutes, can you guys please add a tip integration? Um, that is that is very well thoughtful, very thoughtful of you. But I'm not entirely sure we can, unless Julie, I know you're very skilled. <laughs> <laughs> in two and a half and three quarter minutes. A tip integration? So like having a little tool tip? Um, I, yeah, maybe add I a, thinking a, that right? I believe so. I'm not entirely sure how they would like to. Um, Golden likes the font, by the way. Um, oh, but cool. let's see. I'm trying to find the, the, the chat keeps going up and the dyslexia is kicking in hard. All right, maybe add a tip calculator integration so people can share their bills. Tips. Not entirely sure tips. how that would work. Okay. Sorry, I thought I thought you meant maybe a tool tip thing in here, um, but I get it with the app. So a tip calculator. Yes. Um, that's a good so that minutes. might make that might make more <laughs> sense on the diner side of things right so this experience is all about the chefs um so maybe what we could have is like an estimated like a suggested tip or something like that um that would probably maybe be included in i want to say like the menu but i feel like you know if we get to if i keep working on this app and we get to the diner side of things that could be a great feature having a tip calculator. Indeed. And we have one more suggestion for the chat. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you, are you sure? Are you quite prepared? I, I need to hear. I am extremely ready and steady I am for this next. Extremely <laughs> ready and steady. Let's do it. Okay. okay. Howard Pinsky says, can we make it pop? Is that is that doable? Can we, can we make that happen? Make it pop. <laughs> That's a big ask. Oh, man. It's a, it's a big ask. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Let's see. How should guys how in the chat? What would make it pop? it pop? How should how should we? I think what we could do, and just bear with me. I think this might be interesting. What if we tried to do that scaling of the images in the masks for just the um, the beginning page? You know where yeah, the so if we... scale, not just moving, but if they scale too. Is that something we can do just very quickly? Totally. Let's play in around one, with that. In so, one minute. If not, that's fine. All right. Let's do it. I'm going to try scaling this image a bit. Let's move it this way. Let's this grab another one. This is like a super smooth thing that I've seen. And I remember when I saw it, I was like so happily upset. <laughs> 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 I was like, ooh, there needs to be a tutorial on this one. Yeah. Um, but guys, as we're doing that, and Julie is, I'm going to let her focus. I'm going to let her focus while you're watching this happen. Guys, stay tuned. Next, we have Howard Pinsky in with the next or today's daily design challenge. So you don't want to leave. You don't, if you leave your seat at all, it should be to grab an avocado toast sandwich or something that we <laughs> had on the menu. We had a breakfast burrito. It's still time. Breakfast burrito is fine at any time of the day. So I don't want to hear any. I don't want to hear any. I don't like breakfast burritos at 9.05 p.m. or a.m. Breakfast burrito is all around. Yeah, they're good anytime. So it's avocado toast, but not. I have not had from my experience. Um, but yes, guys, we have a lot. We have two more segments today of Adobe Live. So definitely stick around. And we also have Behance live streamers who are streaming content all day round from fresh cake you have me um you have you have a lot of people and from a lot of different backgrounds so whatever fits your fancy adobe live has your needs okay commercial over how are we doing <laughs> <laughs> all right i tried playing around with a little bit definitely needs a lot of more refinements but this is what happens when you adjust the masks Ooh. so enlarging the images inside them let's let's play that one more time and then we have to close out so it definitely nice. could be smoother, but shows off as a good starting point for playing around with imagery. So yeah, exactly. here we are. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was very nice. We did it. We're here. This is day two. A recap. We have gone through the strategy of what this app was going to be on day one. We have not only prototyped, wireframed, done all the color theory. I'm not entirely sure the technical term of that, but we've done quite a lot in the last two days from wireframing, picking the colors. What is the layout of all these screens? And we've prototyped it in a beautiful, complete app at the end of today's segment. So if you guys are interested in getting this prototype or this particular uh, file, Julie is gonna figure out how we're gonna get this to you. But I believe it might be somehow attached to this in our first video segment. So guys, we are at time. Julie, any closing remarks to our fans and Thank audience? You everyone for having me super excited to be on here and go through this app prototype and we'll see you next time all right we'll see you next time guys if you liked what we did here and you really love adobe live which we <laughs> we know we all do don't forget to hit the like button stick around for the next episode in howard and we will see you on the next one bye guys peace <laughs>